What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and this is uh, part 10 of my ranking and reviewing Frank Zappa's guitar solos within the context of an album. So I'm going to review all the solos on the album for today. And then at the end of the video, I'll literally put a list up of those uh, solos on the screen. And then I will show you where this album compares to the other nine albums I've done so far. Not going in any sort of order, though I am currently trying to do all the 88 solos um, that have been released across his catalog pre and post his passing away. And then I'm gonna do one final 88 wrap up video. Then my plan right now is to finish the stage series. So I'll do one, two, three, and five. And then after that, see what I'm in the mood for and go from there. Um, but we have, uh, you can't do that on stage anymore, volume six. There is one 88 solo on here, which is why I'm doing it. This will complete all the 88 solos. Um, I've already done all the other 88 releases, the four full ones, plus the other stage volume, number four that had some 88 solos on it. There were only six solos on this one. Not only were there only six solos on this release, uh, disc one only has one solo. It's in Muffin Man and it fades out. So yeah, really good keyboard solos. Warren Cucurullo gets a solo, but Frank, yeah, he's got 184 Muffin Man solo on here. Yeah, kind of rough. Um, I think it's 84, not 82, right? It's 84, I'm pretty sure it's 84. Yeah, it's an 84 Muffin Man solo. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna, let's do it. There's six, let's get at them. Um, my number, oh, I haven't even pulled up my list yet. Um, my number six is Muffin Man. Yeah, Muffin Man. Uh, too short, nice and shredding. I mean, he's bringing the energy, but like almost as soon as you're like, all right, we found our groove, it's going. You can like, oh, it's, definitely fading out. Fade out takes a long time. It's almost like a tease fade out because it takes so long, but it still fades out. Um, so yeah, it, it does what it's supposed to do in 84 style. It's a Muffin Man solo. Definitely not as good as like those 77, 78 monsters, but you know, it's Muffin Man. Uh, number five is the Illinois Anima Bandit. This is from 84 also. I really like this version of the vamp. It, the way the keyboardists play it, it almost has a Doobie Brothers quality. It's like almost like a, like a Michael McDonald era Doobie Brothers. It's like this da 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 da, you know, like that. But the keyboards are playing most of that because then event, you know, once the the vamp is established, like Tunis and Wackerman are going off doing other things. But the keyboards are playing this like da 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 da. You belong to me. Da. And it's like a weird. Doobie Brothers song. Yeah, really good vamp. Solo just doesn't do anything for me. Like, it's Frank doing the Illinois Enema Bandit rock kind of bluesy thing, going through that vamp, kind of frenzy. Definitely gets a little better towards the end. Kind of lengthy, but I don't know what it is. He just never, it's like he never catches a wave that I would ever decide to catch if I was out there surfing with him. I just, I don't know what it is. This, so, I mean, I recognize there are good parts. It's a little more enjoyable than the Muffin Man solo because it's longer and it does get kind of frenzied and interesting toward the end. But I don't know. Like, it's one of those where, like, I have friends who don't like Zappa's guitar playing because it's just him going on and on and they don't think it's interesting. They like, you know, they're more like, I don't know, proggy, written type things. Um, this is one of those where I kind of agree. It just does nothing for me. I'm like, it just seems like he's shredding for the, the sake of shredding. So yeah, weird. It's a weird little one. Again, better than Muffin Man because it has moments at the end, but doesn't really do much for me. Uh, that's Illinois and Bandit number five. Uh, number four is uh, the Black Page uh, number, what is this? The Black Page, no, Black Napkins. Black Page was this. Uh, the Black Napkins. First off, the first part of this Black Napkins is from 76. It's from those Christmas shows. You can feel hear the full ver you, uh, the same version that we get on that uh, Zappa in New York. It's those shows. And we get a sax solo, a horn solo. But then I think it's, I don't know what, yeah, I forgot what horn it is. I think it's a saxophone. Um, but when we cut to the guitar solo, we're cutting to an 84 guitar solo. And just the ambience of the track, like it is a rough cut. It just feels like a completely different vibe. Like you can feel the energy of the room just change. And we go from that awesome Christmas 76 band to like this weird electronic, electronic drums, just weird 80 sounded Zappa band. It is a harsh transition. It's a black napkin solo. 
I enjoy all black napkins solo. Like I said, if they were to release a box set with every one of them, I would buy it and love it. If they, for some reason, had to leave off a year, there would be 84 solos I could, I could say they leave off. This one, it's good. I have no complaints about it. It's solid, but it is the 84 band at its least interesting. I just, for some reason, it doesn't work. They, they just sound... They, they give Black Napkins a weird sound to it. Uh, whereas Volume 4, the one I just did, You Can't Do That On Stage, Volume 4, really, really, really highlighted the strengths of the 84 band, especially in the solo department. This one is not doing that. It's Black Napkins. I enjoy it. But again, it's a little, it's lacking a little something. Frank's not doing a really good job on this release so far, as far as guitar solos, if you ask me. Um, number four is 13. Um, this is from the uh, 78 shows, Halloween. Knock on wood, we get that release this year, right? It'd be 45 years. It's a good number to celebrate. Um, and the first part of it is an El Shankar, El Shankar violin solo, which is epic. Once we get to Frank's solo, which is about two thirds of the way through the jam, so what, the whole thing's six minutes. Yeah, we get about just about four of uh, Shankar. And then we we drop the, the vamp altogether. So it's the 13 vamp, which is like one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, or something like that. One, two, one, two, I don't know what it is, uh, but it's a 13 vamp. Um, and anyways, uh, once we get to Frank Solo, they drop the vamp and Frank just does some sort of like Yo Mama-esque, just like, you know, free form, spacey kind of riffing while the band just kind of quietly does stuff behind him. And then after he kind of digs into like the direction he's going, that vamp starts to come back. And it is at that point when the vamp starts to come back that things get really, really, really interesting. And you're like, okay, this is going someplace. And then right when you feel like it's going someplace, it kind of cuts out. So very interesting. Uh, the Shankar part in the beginning is fantastic. I do like the 13 vamp. Um, solo over, um, that's why it's called 13, but I, I do wish there was more to the solo. It does feel like it's been cut off, um, which I think it was um, edited down. Um, and so it just, we need a little more. It just feels a little like, uh, it's interesting. There's a lot here. You just, it's almost like a tease, which is why we need the complete Halloween 78 box set. Those shows are ridiculous. ZFT. Um, number two, uh, that was number three, 13. Uh, number two is Alien Orifice. Um, this is an 81 Alien Orifice, I think from the Halloween shows. Um, absolutely great. I love the solos in Alien Orifice. I love the way that vamp works. It almost has this, I think I described it as like, almost like salmon, like swimming upstream. And you get like this, the vamp, and then you get this like little repeated little like phrase that almost sounds like he's jumping up to the next level and then taking off once he gets to the next level. Um, it's a pretty contained solo, like Frank's kind of doing the same thing. But every time that like that vamp repeats itself, that sort of rhythmic motif that dominates the solo, like he goes off in a fifth direction or he gets higher or he gets lower. He just does something to like shift it up, shift it around, mix it up. And it just works for me. It's one of those solos, especially in 81, that just like really, really like these Alien Orifice guitar solos. Um, it's not doing anything I'm, ex you know, it's doing exactly what I expect Alien Orifice solos to do, but I appreciate it. And on this album in which everything else, I mean, I think we're going in order at this point, right? Muffin Man was the first solo. Illinois was the second solo. Okay, we jumped to Black Napkins at 13. Yeah, so eight, this is getting better as we go on. And then the number one solo on this release, I think by far the best solo on this release is crew slut um immediately when we get to the the uh the solo section it's almost as if you're like watching a movie right and you know there's a chase scene going on and the camera's like showing this empty street and you're just like all right there's nothing going on and all of a sudden the lead car or the car that's like that our hero is in is like all of a sudden enters the scene and like screeches around the corner and then takes off towards the camera that's the way Frank enters. Like, we're ready for the solo. It's about to come. And all of a sudden, Frank's just like screeching and he just takes off and he's in it. This is just high energy. Um, uh, at one point, I mean, it's just really aggressive. At one point, uh, Tunis and Wackerman go into this straight up swing vibe, takes this utterly just 
just almost like you want to get up and dance to it, but Frank's still doing his crazy chaotic thing. Um, yeah, it's just an absolutely amazing from start to finish, pedal to the metal, take off, go at your best, but like the rhythm section is almost like, like AI that's like designing the road as you drive. So even though your goal is to go as fast as possible straight ahead as Frank, the rhythm section is making you do all these other things and dip and swing. And it's just a really, really fun, really good. And it's from 1988 too. It is the one solo. It is the reason we're reviewing this. It is the number one solo on this release. That is from 1988, Cruise Slut. But yeah, that's it. Those are the only solos on an entire You Can't Do That On Stage Anymore release, which is kind of disappointing. Um, this, though they are right there on the screen for you to look at them, for you visual learners, that is what they look like. And then the album, it falls right there. Yeah, not, I mean, one, there are only six of them, so it's gonna be less interesting or have potential to be less interesting because there's fewer solos. But other than Cruise Sled, they're all just kind of average. I have to imagine there's a better Black Napkin solo out there, though it was from the uh, November 23rd Chicago show. And a lot of this stuff is from the November 23rd Chicago show. So I kind of think Frank was like, I got a really good sound quality version of this show. We're just going to put all this stuff out. Though I, I don't think the Black Napkins, I, there's got to be better Black Napkins out there. Illinois doesn't do anything for me. I know there's better Illinois out there. So... You know, whatever. He gave it to us. It's still Frank. It's still good in that regard, but I don't think it's his best. But that Cruise Slut solo is fantastic. But yeah, that's all I got for this. Thanks for watching. Let me know your opinion. I'm going to drop in final sort of 88 thoughts list. And then I think there were a total of 47 88 solos, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there, somewhere around 50. I'll put a list of the complete ranking of the 88 solos. That will come next. Anyways, Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share, share your opinions, share your thoughts, share your rants, share your raves, and go listen to music, people. Go listen to this Cruise Slut, because it's the highlight of the album. Cruise Slut! All right, peace, y'all. Talk to you later.